Hey everyone, it's time for chapter 7 of the Westing Game. Ready? Chapter 7 Eight card tables, each with two chairs, were arranged in the center of the game room. Sports equipment lined the walls, hunting rifles, ping-pong paddles, billiard cues, a full rack, Turtle noticed. Bows and arrows, darts, bats, rackets, all looked like possible murder weapons to the jittery heirs who were waiting to be told where to sit. Theo wandered over to the chess table to admire the finely carved pieces. Someone had moved a white pawn. All right, he'll play along. Theo defended the opening with a black knight. On hearing Plum's throat-clearing signal, Sedell Pulaski switched the painted crutch to her left armpit and flipped to a fresh page in her notebook. Shh! Seventh. And now, dear friends, relatives, and enemies, the Westing game begins. The rules are simple. Number of players, 16 divided into 8 pairs. Each pair will receive $10,000. Each pair will receive one set of clues. Forfeits. If any player drops out, the partner must leave the game. The pair must return the money. Absent pairs forfeit the 10000 Their clues will be held until the next session. Players will be given two days' notice of the next session. Each pair may then give one answer. Object of the game? To win. Did you hear that, Crow? Otis Amber said excitedly. $10,000! Now, aren't you glad I made you come, huh? Shh! That was Turtle. The object of the game was to win, and she wanted to win. Eighth. The heirs will now be paired. When called, go to the assigned table. Your name and position will be read as signed on the receipt. It will be up to the other players to discover who you really are. Table 1. Madam Sun, Madam Sun Lin Hu Cook. Jake Wexler, standing or sitting when not lying down. Grace Wexler did not understand her husband's joke about position. Mr. Who did, but he was in no mood for humor. $10,000 was at stake. Both pleaded for their absent spouses. Emergency operation. My wife doesn't even speak English. To no avail. Table one remained empty and moneyless. Table two. Turtle Wexler, witch. Flora Bombach, dressmaker. Sighs of relief greeted the naming of Turtle's partner, but Flora Bombach seemed pleased to be paired with the kicking witch. At least her face was still puckered in that elfin grin. Turtle had hoped for one of the high school seniors, especially Doug Who. Table 3. Christos Theodorakis, birdwatcher. D. Denton Deer, intern, St. Joseph's Hospital, Department of Plastic Surgery. Theo protested. He and his brother should be paired together. Chris was his responsibility. Mrs. Wexler protested. Dr. D. should be paired with his bride-to-be. D. Denton Deer protested, but silently. If this had been arranged for free medical advice, they, whoever they are, were mistaken. He was a busy man. And he was a doctor not a nursemaid. But Chris was delighted to be part of the outside world. He would tell the intern about the person who limped into the Westing house. Maybe that was the murderer. Unless his partner was the murderer. This was really exciting, even better than television. Table 4. Alexander McSuthers, doorman. J.J. Ford, judge. Appellate Division of State Supreme Court. The heirs watched the jaunty doorman pull out a chair for the judge. It had never occurred to them that Sandy was a nickname for Alexander, but that couldn't be what Sam Westing meant by it will be up to the other players to discover who you really are. Or could it? The judge did not return the chip to smile. Doorman, he calls himself, and the others had signed simple things too. Cook, dressmaker, the podiatrist had even made fun of his position. She must seem as pompous as that intern, 
putting on airs with that title. Well, she had worked hard to get where she was. Why shouldn't she be proud of it? She was no token. Her record was faultless. Watch it, Josie Joe. Westing's getting to you already and the game has barely begun. Table 5. Grace Windsor Wexler, heiress. James Shin Hu, restaurateur. Grace Windsor Wexler ignored the Snickers. If she was not the heiress now, she would be soon. What with her clues, Angela's clues, Turtle's clues, Denton's clues, and the clues of Mr. Who's obedient son. Five thousand dollars lost. Oh, well, who needs Jake anyway? She'd win on her own. You'll be happy to know that Mr. Westing was really my Uncle Sam, she whispered to her partner. So what, thought Mr. Who. Five thousand dollars lost? He should have told his wife about this meeting, dragged her along. Sam Westing, the louse, was cheating him again. Whoever killed him deserves a medal. Table 6. Birth Erica Crow, Good Salvation Soup Kitchen, and Otis Amber, Deliverer. The delivery boy danced a merry jig, but Crow, her sore-footed squeeze, her sore foot squeezed back into her tight shoe, headed for table six with a grim face. Why were they watching her? Did they think she killed Wendy? Could the guilty know her guilt? Repent. Crow limps, Chris Theodorakis noted. Table seven. Theo Theodorakis, brother and Doug Who, first in all-state high school mile run. They slapped hands, and Doug jogged to the table seven. Thea moved more slowly, and passing the chessboard, he saw that White had already made a second move. He countered with a black pawn. Maybe he should not have written brother, but like it or not, that was his position in life. Chris was smiling at him in pure sweetness, which made Theo feel even guiltier about his resentment. I guess that makes us partners, Miss Pulaski, Angela said. Oh, pardon me, did you say something? Table 8. Sadell Pulaski, Secretary to the President, and Angela Wexler, none. Angela stepped tentatively behind the secretary, not knowing whether to ignore her disability or to take her arm. At least her crippled partner could not be the murderer, but... It was embarrassing being paired with such a... No, she shouldn't feel that way. It was her mother who was upset. She could feel the indignant anger without having to look at Grace. Her perfect daughter was paired with a freak. What good luck, the hobbling Sedale Pulaski thought. Now she would really be noticed with such a pretty young thing for a partner. They might even invite her to the wedding. She'd paint a crutch white with little pink nosegays. Denton Deer was troubled. What in the world did Angela mean by none? Once again, Edgar Jennings Plum cleared his throat. Nasal drip, Denton Deer whispered, confiding the latest diagnosis to his partner, and Chris giggled. What's the cripple kid so happy about, the intern wondered. Ninth. Money. Each pair in attendance will now receive a check for the sum of $10,000. The check cannot be cashed without the signatures of both partners. Spend it wisely or go for broke. May God thy gold refine. A piercing shriek suddenly reminded the Westing heirs of murder. While passing out the checks, the lawyer had stepped on Crow's sore foot is this legal, Judge? Sandy asked. It is not only legal, Mr. McSuthers, Judge Ford replied, signing her name on the check and handing it to the doorman. It is a shrewd way to keep everyone playing the game. Tenth. Each pair in attendance will now receive an envelope containing a set of clues. No two sets of clues are alike. It is not what you have. It's what you don't have that counts. Placing the last of the envelopes on table eight, the young lawyer smiled at Angela. Sedell Pulaski smiled back. 
This makes no sense, Denton Deer complained. Floor four clues typed on cut squares of Westing super strength paper towels lay on the table before him. Arms and elbows at odds, with fingers fanned, Chris tried to rearrange the words in some grammatical, if not logical, order. Hey, watch it! the intern shouted as one clue wafted to the floor. Flora Bombach leaped from her chair at the next table, picked up the square of paper, and set it face down before the trembling youngster. I didn't see it, she announced loudly. I really didn't see it, she repeated under the questioning gaze of her partner, Turtle Wexler, which... The word she had seen was plain. The players protected their clues more carefully now. Hunched over the tables, they moved the paper squares this way and that way, mumbling and grumbling. The murderer's name must be there, somewhere. Only one pair had not yet seen their clues. At table eight, Sadell Pulaski placed one hand on the envelope and raised a finger to her lips and tilted her head toward the other heirs. Just watch and listen, she meant. She may be odd, but she's smart, Angela thought. And since each, since each pair had a different set of clues, they would watch and listen for clues to their clues. <laughs> the delivery boy slapped his partner on the back. That's us, old pal, Queen Crow and King Amber. What's this? On or no? Doug, who turned a clue upside down, then right side up again. Theo jabbed an elbow in his ribs and turned to see if anyone had heard, and Angela lowered her eyes just in time. J.J. Ford crumpled the clues in her fist and rose in anger. I'm sorry, Mr. McSuthers, but playing a pawn in this foolish game is one thing, but to be insulted with minstrel show dialect... Please, Judge, please don't quit on me, Sandy pleaded. I'd have to give back all the money, and it would break my wife's heart, and my poor kids. Judge Ford regarded the desperate doorman without pity. So many had begged before her bench. Please, Judge, I, I lost my job and my pension. I can't fight no more. Don't quit, at, don't quit just because of some nonsensical words. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me, she had chanted as a child. Words did hurt, but she was no longer a child, nor a hanging judge. And there was always the chance. All right, Mr. McSuthers, I'll stay. Judge A. Ford sat down, her eyes sparkling with wickedness. And we'll play the game just as Sam Westing would have played it. Mean. Flora Bumbach squeezed her eyes together and screwed up her face. She was concentrating. Haven't you memorized them yet? Turtle didn't like the way Otis Amber's scrawny neck was swiveling high out of his collar. And what was Angela staring at? Yes, I, I think so, the dressmaker replied, but I can't make heads or tails of them. They make perfect sense to me, Turtle said. And one by one, she put the clues in her mouth, chewed, and swallowed them. Gibberish, Mr. Who muttered. Grace Windsor Wexler agreed. Excuse me, Mr. Plum, but what are these clues clues to? I mean, exactly what are we supposed to find? Purple waves, Sandy joked with a wink at Turtle. Mrs. Wexler uttered a cry of recognition and changed the order of two of her clues. It's still gibberish, Mr. Who complained. Other players pressed the lawyer for more information, and Ed Plum only shrugged. Then could you please give us copies of the will? A copy will be on file, Judge Ford began. I'm afraid not, Your Honor, the lawyer said. The will not, I, I, I mean, the will, 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 he paused and tried again. The will will not be filed until the first of the year. My instructions specifically state that no heir is allowed to see any of the documents until the game is over. No copy. That's not fair. But wait, they did have a copy, a shorthand copy. Sadell Pulaski had plenty of attention now. She smiled back at the friendly faces, revealing a lipstick st stain on her front teeth. Isn't there some sort of last statement, Sandy asked Plum. 
I mean, like the intern says, nothing makes any sense. Eleventh. Senseless, you say. Death is senseless, yet makes way for the living. Life, too, is senseless unless you know who you are, what you want, and which way the wind blows. So on with the game. The solution is simple if you know whom you're looking for. But heirs, beware. Be aware. Some are not who they say they are, and some are not who they seem to be. Whoever you are, it's time to go home. God bless you all, and remember this. Buy Westing Paper Products.